There's even more stuff here than there was before. You know that if a lady sees all this letter, she will not be pleased, citizen. Oh really? And what will she do? She will have your head and feed it to Malurka, that's what she'll do. And what if I were to say, drop another potion there? You wouldn't dare. I have this potion right here. Don't drop it. I'm going to drop it. You better not drop it. You dropped it. Yes, I did. What are you going to do about it? Nothing right now. But if the lady sees this, she won't see this. She never comes out here. So you hope. So you hope. Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play Ultima 8, and when last we left off, we snuck back into the palace, this time armed with the key that would let us get the ceremonial dagger here. We need to return this dagger over to Vividos immediately, because if we don't, bad things might happen. And so, let us go back to the eastern area outside Tenebrae. We'll explore that area later. For now, I think it's rather urgent that we return this dagger over to the necromancers. Maybe Mordia will notice that this has happened, but hopefully by the time it has uh, been noticed that um, they'll be able to hide the dagger better, or rather that Mordia won't try and take it again. Maybe she'll just presume that she has the dagger and won't uh, ask questions about the fact that the necromancers can still perform the various rites that they need the dagger for. Let's go and uh, head to the cemetery, shall we? We know exactly where it is, it's over here. Maybe the longsword will be useful at some point, but for now I'm quite happy. There is a ghoul just hanging around with two peasants. Let's see if we can lure the ghoul over here. The ghoul really doesn't seem that bothered about the peasants being there. So let's, uh, actually let's go over here. The ghoul is very slowly going to head this way. Have at thee, ghoul! Kindly do not walk into my line of swigging this weapon, peasants, as now I shall walk this way. Hopefully there won't be any more undead on the path towards the, uh, ah, there's a skeleton. We know that skeletons tend to come back to life, so we're just going to, uh, ah, you got one hit in. That is not good. Let's quickly grab what you have. And that is not very much. We can uh, just put that there. Let's just leave, shall we? and get our health up. We only took a tiny amount of damage. We'll just leave you there. You can give chase all you like, Mr. Skeleton. I have no desire to fight you, or you two actually. I'm just going to uh, go on my way. But these spiders, I will engage in combat. And that is one of them down. And the other one will also perish as soon as I can line up my feet. And are you gone? Nearly. One more clash occurred, and then the Avatar was victorious. Truly, the bard sung of that battle that day. And there is one ghoul coming to say hi, but we have no interest in saying hi to the ghoul. In the cemetery we now are. Let's go and uh, hand this over to Vividos. I'm sure that he is uh, just outside waiting for us. Let us go and say hello. Hello, Vividos. We have that dagger that you want. You are not here. You are inside, and that, I imagine, is Lothian. Let us save, shall we? I feel this might be a rather important thing that is about to occur. We will save here, over this. There we go. Marvellous. And now we will go and return the dagger to the necromancers. Hello again, my friend. I have the dagger. Truly? You have the dagger? Bless you, my friend, bless you! Your timing is perfect, for I need the dagger immediately! May I please have the dagger? And we hand it over. Eventually. Thank you, my friend. You have done good service this day, and your timing could not be better. For as you can see, Lothian lies upon the altar barely clinging to life. For your service, I will grant you the boon which you did ask of me. I will introduce you to the necromancer. But first, stand witness to the ceremony of eternity, for the time has come for Lothian and I to perform the ceremony. Please follow my instructions carefully. Are you prepared, Lothian? All of my life I have prepared for this, Vividos. I beg you now, send me to the Mountain King. Very well. Please, my friend, stand beside the altar. Please kneel before the altar of passage. 
Lord Lithos, Mountain King, eldest and mightiest of the four titans, we come forth to send your faithful servant Lothian into your waiting arms. Tell us now, Lord of the Underworld, does this our sacrifice please you? Yes, Lord, take me. I am ready to greet you, Mountain King. Let all rejoice, for Lithos is pleased with this our sacrifice. Now prepare to greet the ambassador from Lithos' realm. Cal Corp. That's a lot of undead. The dead now surround you, Lothian. Prepare yourself for your lord. The grave opens before me. Be you cleansed for death, Lithos awaits you. Sweet dagger, I am your sheath. Wear me now. Go you now to the Mountain King, from life to death, from death to Lithos. Ex ort corp ort des Lithos. Now shall we bow in reverence of deeds here done, and to the awesome might of the Mountain King. All is done. Lothia may now join her lord. Arise, my friend. You may now greet the necromancer, my friend, for I am he. You murdered that woman! I killed her, yes, but I did not murder her. Why did you have to stab her? Or, well, what's the difference? Murdering someone is to take their life against their will. Lothian had known nearly her entire life that when it was her time of passage, she would be killed in this fashion. The same will happen to me when it is my time. Why did you have to stab her? Have you not heard a word that I have said? The ceremony of eternity is one of our most sacred rites. It is Lithos's law. The same will happen to you? Of course. When my time comes to be sent to meet the Mountain King, my first apprentice will perform the Ceremony of Eternity and prepare me for my journey. It is the way of the Necromancer. So that is the Ceremony of Eternity? Yes, the ceremony must be performed as Lithos has commanded. You see, as Lothian was Necromancer, she will be permitted into the Hall of Eternity. In order to be allowed into this most hallowed of places, the necromancers must be prepared in the Ceremony of Eternity. What is the Hall of Eternity? The Hall of Eternity is a special place within the City of the Dead. The City of the Dead is a place where only necromancers are allowed. It is there that Lithos sits upon his throne and consults his necromancers and dispenses his judgment. The Hall is a most prestigious place. The City of the Dead? Yes, the heart of Lithos's realm. The City of the Dead is where all necromancers who have been interred go and live on in death, under Lithos's gentle rule. Farewell. Farewell, my friend. Lothian is dead, and we were witness to Lothian's sacrifice. These ghouls are entirely passive and will not attack us. Now we need to ask Vividos to learn the ways of necromancy. If we become Vividos' first apprentice, we may be the ones sacrificing him when he gets old. Hello, Vividos. Hello again, my friend. You are the necromancer? I am now. With Lothian's passage, I step forward and take her place. As Lothian's scion, I was next in the necromantic line of succession. What is a scion? A scion is the necromancer's chosen successor. It is normal for the necromancer's first apprentice to be the scion. It is sad to say, but I was Lothian's only apprentice. Now, I am indeed of an apprentice. Funny you should say that. For we could be that apprentice. You need an apprentice? Yes, I do. While we were on the subject, it occurs to me that you are a man of exceptional qualities both physical and spiritual. Would you wish to become my apprentice? Here we go. The choice of, do we want to progress the game? 
For as bad as being the necromancer seems to be, or the necromancer's apprentice, we have to learn the powers of necromancy to complete the game. So yes indeed, we are honoured. Yes, I am honoured. Good, then it is so done. As my apprentice, I would have you begin your studies immediately, which must be learned before one can wield the magic of a necromancer. I'll learn magic? Indeed you will, my apprentice. By the time that you have completed your studies, you will be capable of more than you ever dreamed possible. There is much to learn. Indeed there is, apprentice. That is why you must first consult the library freely and often. There you will learn much of our order, our history, and our magic. Will you help me learn? Yes, of course, my student. It is part of my responsibility to teach you all that I know. Where is the library? It is located just upstairs. Feel free to use it at any time. I expect to see you there quite often. Oh, you will not see us there quite often. We're going to quickly skim read everything and then we're going to move on. What must I do? First, you must gather some reagents for me. Return them to me and I will teach you of their magical properties. There will be other tasks to follow. If you accomplish all of them correctly, then I shall make you my apprentice, and most likely the scion. After that, you shall make a pilgrimage. A pilgrimage? Do not concern yourself with that now. There is much that must be done before you may even think about your holy pilgrimage. What reagents do you need? I need for you to bring me a sample of Executioner's Hood from a place of danger, and fallen sticks from a place where spirits roam. What does Executioner's Hood look like? It sounds like a mushroom. It is a black, leafy plant. It grows nearby, between the graveyard and Tenebrae. Look for the hood under a large tree. It is a rare plant, so look closely. These items are magical? Each taken individually, the item's magical properties are inert. However, when blended together under the proper conditions and intonements, their magical qualities are unlocked. All of this you will learn in time. Where spirits roam? Yes, that is very important. Go to Western Tenebrae. There you will find the sticks, better known as Dead Man's Elbows, that I need. Farewell. Farewell, Apprentice. We are now the Apprentice in Training of the Necromancer. We will soon be learning necromancy. We need to uh, head up here and we need to read everything that we can. And we might as well save while we're here, because that was a long cutscene. Let's save. Ah, Avatar, the thrill of conquest is so invigorating. So you keep telling me, Guardian. We have a lot to read. We're going to read this first, Dispelling Myths, the Truth About Magic. Many other rumours of the magical and the supernatural which exist outside of the titanic magic. Now, of course, any reasonable person knows that any such thing is nonsense. Any thinking person must know that the titans are the only magic in the world. However, in the interest of fairness, for any who may doubt that the true magic is held only by the titans, I have investigated three well-known reported cases of magical occurrences that fall outside of the titanic influence. The first episode of Magic which I investigated was an occurrence in which a woman who lives outside of Tenebrae, who claimed to know something about a ghost, who had some magical capabilities. The woman's name is Kelandra, and she makes her living as a fisherwoman. Let me assure all that this woman knows nothing of the supernatural. In fact, Kelandra knows virtually nothing at all. Quite frankly, I found this woman to be completely mad. She would ramble on constantly about her daughter to the point where I began to believe that her daughter does not even exist. All of the outlandish stories about her daughter could not apply to just one person. Therefore, in my expert opinion, the daughter is purely fictional. Anything else that Calandra had to talk about were things that the fish told her. Therefore, it is perfectly clear that this woman is completely mad, and anything that she has to say cannot be believed. The second event, which many people have reported as magical, are the mysterious lights of the plateau. Very few people have ever reported having seen these, yet the lights have lived on in pagan lore for a very long time. Many people believe that these lights are some sort of magic, which has generated some unknown force of nature. 
Others believe these lights to be some sort of magical energy, which is created by the hermit that lives upon the plateau. Such opinions are, of course, the result of people spreading unsubstantiated rumours without looking into basic facts. I have disproven the myths that these lights even exist by doing what others simply would do. I took the leisurely stroll up to the plateau and investigated things myself. I walked up to the plateau, which by the way is a lovely walk that I recommend everyone do at least once. That is a complete lie! There were at least a number of ghouls and one puzzle I needed to solve, and there was also a jumping puzzle! Unless you're really good at jumping, that is not a good walk. Once at the plateau, I met with the old hermit who lives there. Now I must say that this was the most difficult part of my investigation. The old man, Mithran is his name, was a gruff and friendly fellow. That is also a lie! This Mithran has nothing to do but lay about all day long, yet getting him to answer my questions was like pulling teeth from a troll. He spoke to me in short, sharp sentences, which he virtually spit into my face. And the worst thing of all this is that this silly old man thought he knew more of the world than I did! Well, I did manage to get Mithran to assure me that there were no magical lights that danced about upon the plateau. I am sure that he would not lie to me, as I am employed by Lady Mordia, and therefore carry her influence. I wonder if the lights that the uh, book here is referring to are the Zoranite Wisps, the ones that taught the Avatar how to blow up the world with Armageddon. I don't think they're in the game, unfortunately. The third instance of magic, which I have disproven beyond the shadow of a doubt, is the alleged existence of a magical axe called Deceiver. This axe is supposed to be found on a small island off the Stone Cove. The island, which cannot be seen by land, is supposed to be reached by stones which rise above the water, only to sink again in a matter of moments. Oh dear. Timing puzzles with jumping. That may get us killed. As I had no intention of going through those awful catacombs, I sailed to Stone Cove to investigate. I can assure one and all that there is no island off of Stone Cove, and there certainly is no magical axe. Nor did I see any rising and sinking stones. Of course, the stones were the only plausible part of this ridiculous story. I did find it quite possible for Malurka to create just such a thing, so that she may amuse herself. So there you have it, dear reader. Irrefutable proof that there is no magic in the world other than that which the Titans have chosen to create. I realise that this book may take a little bit of fantasy out of some people's daily lives, but if we are to better serve Our Lady, we must all live in the here and now. Also, do take note of the fact that if Mithran did have any magic that wasn't linked to the Titans, he certainly wouldn't have told me, because I'd have uh, got a little bit angry and he probably would have been killed. That was a book that really was not worth reading, because it was full of lies! I'm pretty sure it was all full of lies, I imagine there will be an island off of the uh, Stone Cove with a magical axe. Let's read Earthen Magic, shall we? Beware unto any who may read this tome. The power of the Mountain King is great, and the dread sovereign of all clay and earth is to be feared and respected. Therefore, as you read the words of might contained within these pages, know that the power that the Mountain King will grant to you is great. Use the power that you learn here wisely, and remember, the Mountain King can take from you anything that he has given you. Do not abuse that which you learn while in the service of the mighty Lithos. The first spell a student of earthen magic must learn is the Open Ground spell. The use of this spell will open the sacred city of our father, and allow you to enter therein. The reagents needed for this spell are Blood and Blackmoor. Speak the words Des Poor Yelm to create your magic token. Then shall you be allowed to envelop yourself in the arms of the Mountain King. The second spell the student must learn is Speak Dead. This must be, for the student must first learn from the long dead necromancers of old. From their dead lips shall come words of knowledge and power. So that the student may speak to his dead tutors, the student must know Death Speak. The reagents needed for Death Speak are but blood and bone. Use these reagents together with the words Cal Wis Corp, and the student shall be able to learn from the ancient necromancers. We're probably going to need both of those spells if we're going to progress through to the City of the Dead eventually. There is what the fish tell me, I think we can read that book at some point somewhere else. There is the Grim Book and Voices. We could read the Grim Book. Let's read it. 
Ah, wait, we've already read that book. Never mind. What about this book? The Voices of Mary by Salem. I wake in the night and the rooms are all dead. I follow a dream. She still echoes in my head. The new girl is twitching, asleep on the floor. I move through dark rooms and pass through a door. Out in the chill, I follow the walk. The spirits aren't speaking, so there's no need to talk. The moon has arisen to flower over the world, while tendrils of mist snake out and slowly unfurl. There's a sign by the sea that doesn't make sense, and out past the jetty wait sirens, horny and tense. Briefly, through windows in the pale glass waves, I see lost faces, ruined heroes in watery graves. I know what comes next, because I've read all my lines. I've been over my part millions of times. As the water rolls in and I'm swallowed by sea, I can hear Mary whisper, calling to me. Come on, baby, from somewhere she cries. I want you to love me, like spiders love flies. Wasn't that a nice read, everyone? It was not a nice read at all. What we need to do is we need to leave here. But first we want to grab all of these reagents, because I'm pretty sure we're going to need all of them eventually. This is not the reagent pouch, this is not the reagent pouch, this is the reagent pouch. We are going to be uh, grabbing everything here. And we have to have the backpack open it seems, so we want to grab this. Yep, we'll just uh, grab that. We now have uh, two of these. We also want some, uh, is that one pile of Blackmore? And that is one pile of Blackmore. We want this as well. Let's just grab this and put that there. The reagents are pretty light. We are going to be able to carry a lot of them. Let's just combine these together. Now we have two piles of Blackmore. Excellent. We might as well get all of the free reagents that we can. And here is some more blood. We need a lot of vials of blood. I believe we can buy these from the uh, necromancer if we want to. Here is some wood. We'll uh, grab that. We also want this uh, bone shard here. We also want this pile of dirt. And we want this vial of blood. Might as well grab everything that we can here. I'm sure the necromancer won't mind that we're taking them. After all, we're now his apprentice. And when we come back, folks, we're going to go and search for those uh, things that he wants us to find. A stick and an executioner's hood. We'll surely find them somewhere around here. We were told that the executioner's hood is pretty nearby, and I think I know where to find the stick. Maybe we'll go to that other part outside Tenebrae and talk to Kilandra. She sounds like somebody that is worth talking to. And so, I'll catch you next time, folks, and I'll see you then. Later. The Avatar, Apprentice Necromancer. I never thought that that would be a title that the Avatar would have, but there we go. Later.